Hello everyone, welcome to the Green Man channel. Hope you're all good and well. So time for another Sunday album review. This time I'm talking about the third studio album by Ukrainian band Ignia and their release Dreams of Lands Unseen, which came out on the Friday just gone via Napalm Records. And the album is 10 tracks and 44 minutes in length. So this is a really interesting concept album, which is reflecting on the experiences of Ukrainian woman who was both a photographer and writer um, back in about the sort of 1930s period who went traveling to lots of different places and documented her experiences. She was in fact, I believe, one of the first um, uh, women of that time to be a documentarian as well. And I think this album conveys quite a powerful message in a way in the current climate with what's happening with the war in Ukraine. Uh, it sort of sends a message about, um, you know, Ukrainian culture and how it's important to keep that culture um, and it does so, I think, in a way which is both, um, you know, quite sort of uh, focused to the point. Also, it's, the album has a certain charm to it, I think, with the way, certainly the vocal delivery style of singer Hell is um, very suited to the sort of exotic Middle Eastern uh, and Oriental sounds that the music is often sort of using. Um, she has this style which she is able to weave in these really well phrased vocals into lots of, of the music and yet it still works even though this is metal. I think it's an achievement that this band have managed to do a metal album with all these other elements and pull together a sound which feels like it is perfectly fitting or very well fitting for the experiences of, of this woman, um, this Ukrainian woman, this, this figure back from the 20th century and it's really quite something actually. I think it really um, is an album which is unique and authentic and is well worth your time and, and well worth checking out. So with that out of the way, let's do the lineup of this band. So on vocals, you've got Hel Bogdanova, um, apologies for bad pronunciations on any of these names, Yevgeny Zitniuk on keys, Dimitro Vinichenko on guitars, Alexander Kamashin on bass and even Kolmohorov on uh, drums as well here. So um, let's go into the tracks on this album and you open up with Teoro, which is an introductory track which I think sets up the, the, the next track, the second track, which was a pre-release single on the album called June. And I think it sets it up, or June's, which sets it up really well. Um, it just sort of flows naturally into that track. Um, sometimes with intro, intro tracks, I'm not a big fan because all they do is just kind of, you know, they're just there just to sort of create a sense of anticipation. But I think this one generally does go quite nicely uh, into the next track of the album and does create a sense of anticipation as well. Um, but yeah, June's the next song is a great single, um, really catchy chorus, but sort of, um, you know, in a lot of symphonic metal bands and those sorts of bands, you, you find sometimes the choruses can be a certain kind of chorus. I don't know how else to put it, but, but with this band and this, this, with this particular chorus, it's just original sounding. I'm like, I can't think of um, many others that sort of sound like in this sort of style. I think it's really, really clever the way that the, the chorus is, is kind of delivered in this particular track. You've also got um, tracks three and four. Uh, I'm not even going to try and pronounce the fourth track. Uh, track three is Camera Obscura. And these two tracks um, are both very aggressive, pretty heavy tracks with some good synchronization with more electronic work, I think, and keyboard work um, by the uh, keyboardist in this band, who's Yevany Zitniuk. And it's really good and it's pretty captivating. Um, before you go into track five, where you go back into something which is um, a little bit more uh, using those uh, Middle Eastern and Eastern sort of instrument sounds again to bring you back, I kind of think we're in with some of the themes on this album as well. Um, you've got uh, the second single on here called Nomad's Luck, which is another great single from the album, another great chorus with some of the album's heavier riffing. You even get sort of the black metal style block B section. Uh, towards the end of the track as well, which is really, really good too. Um, you also have an interesting track called Opiumist, which I felt was a little bit disjointed because you kind of had a really great first half of the track, which was kind of brooding and sort of really built up a mood. But then it sort of, the track pauses, you get some of this um, spoken word section with interesting sounds and effects, which again are to recreate the experience, I think, of, of this Sofia Yablonska, this, this Ukrainian woman. Um, uh, and but it sort of separates the track a little bit too much musically. I didn't really think 
but the second half of the track, this really kind of heavy, almost deathcore-like section of the song worked well with the first half. It just felt a little bit too separate for me. Um, I would have thought it better to build on the themes, the, the music that they were doing in the first half of that song to really get the best out of it. For me, one of the star tracks on this album was the closing track, Zenith, which um, starts off with some bouncy Gen Z guitar notes, but then goes into some really beautiful vocals once again from singer Hell, who, um, you know, is, I think, a real star on this album with the way she delivers her vocals. And on this track, it's really quite a beautiful, fitting way, I think, to close this album, which is about the, this uh, these amazing experiences of uh, this Sofia Yablonska, um, this Ukrainian woman from back in the 20th century. And what a great way to end the album. Um, I only really have mostly very positive things to say about that sound, but I would say I think a couple of songs could have been developed a little bit more for my liking. So I think I'm going to give this album an 8 out of 10, but for originality and it's just general authenticity, it's a 9 or a 10 because, I mean, for, for those things alone, it's just such a great way to pay a tribute, I think, to a bit of Ukrainian culture. So I thoroughly recommend this one, that you, you don't miss this one out if you can give it a chance. Uh, otherwise, for me, take care everyone as always. Hope you enjoyed the review. Don't forget to like and subscribe, all that palaver. Otherwise, for me, take care everybody, and bye for now.